Strider. Definition Strider is an abnormal breathing sound characterized by its harsh, high-pitched, and turbulent nature. It typically occurs when there is a partial obstruction in the larynx or the tracheobronchial tree. Strider is often accompanied by dyspnea, which is difficulty in breathing. Strider is considered a medical emergency, and immediate evaluation and intervention are necessary to identify and address its underlying cause. Other Types of Noisy Breathing Stertor Stertor is characterized by a low-pitched, harsh, and turbulent sound that occurs during respiration. It's typically caused by a partial obstructions located proximal to the larynx and may be accompanied by dyspnea. Some medical professionals consider stertor as part of the strider spectrum, as they share similarities. Snoring Snoring is similar to stertor and that involves noisy breathing during respiration. However, snoring specifically occurs during sleep and is characterized by the same low-pitched turbulent sound. Severity Strider can vary in severity, and its level of severity is an important indicator of how obstructed the airway may be. Here are the different severity levels of Strider. Mild Strider Occurs during unaccustomed exertion or deep breathing. Typically not present during regular day-to-day -day activities. Moderate strider. Occurs with minimal exertion. May interfere with daily activities. Severe strider. Present even at rest without exertion. May be accompanied by the activation of accessory muscles for breathing. Observable signs include the recession of intercostal spaces, the spaces between the ribs, Additional features may include hypoxemia, low oxygen levels, with symptoms like tachycardia, rapid heart rate, tachypnea, rapid breathing, cyanosis, bluish skin discoloration, irritability, and restlessness. Types Strider is a medical term used to describe abnormal breathing sounds caused by partial obstructions in the airway, and it can vary based on when it occurs during the respiratory cycle. Here are the main types of strider. Inspiratory strider, associated with Krupp. Inspiratory strider occurs during the inhalation phase of breathing. It is commonly associated with a variety of lesions in different areas of the upper airway. Subtypes include glottic lesions, involving the vocal cords, supraglottic lesions, above the vocal cords, Hypopharyngeal lesions that affect the supraglottis or glottis. Expiratory strider, wheeze. Expiratory strider is characterized by noisy breathing during exhalation. It typically indicates the obstructions located in the lower airway, such as the distal trachea or bronchi. Biphasic strider. Biphasic strider occurs during both inhalation and exhalation. It's often associated with lesions affecting the subglottis, below the vocal cords, or the proximal trachea, upper part of the windpipe. Pitch. It's an indicator of obstruction of airway location. Low pitch. Indicates a proximal obstruction closer to the upper airway or larynx. High pitch indicates a distal obstruction further down in the lower airway, such as in the trachea or bronchi. Causes of airway obstruction in children. Congenital causes. Proximal to the larynx. Nose. Coanal atresia. 
mandible, micronathia, tongue, macroglossia, hemangioma, lymphangioma, lingual thyroid, etc. Laryngeal, supraglottic, laryngomalacia, cyst, tumors, glottic, webs, palsy, cyst, subglottic, stenosis, tumors, tracheobronchial, vascular loops, tracheoesophageal fistula, mediastinal congenital tumors, atresia, stenosis, etiology of Strider in children. Striders in children can stem from various causes, classified as congenital or acquired. Among congenital factors are laryngeal causes, such as laryngomalacia, vocal cord paralysis, subglottic stenosis, subglottic hemangioma, laryngocele, and mucocele of the ventricle. Extralaryngeal congenital causes encompass tracheomalacia, Crowderchat syndrome, Pierre Robin syndrome, lingular thyroid, and vascular rings over the trachea. Acquired factors include infective causes like acute epiglottis, acute laryngotracheobronchitis, laryngeal diphtheria, and edema of the larynx. Non-infective neurological factors involve bilateral cord paralysis and neonatal tetany. Trauma-related strider can be a result of birth injuries, foreign thermal injury, chemical injury, physical trauma, and radiation, while foreign bodies in the upper aerodigestive tract, or tumors, such as juvenile papilloma, chondroma, thymoma, cystic hygroma, also contribute to acquired cases. Additionally, other causes of strider in children encompass conditions such as bilateral vocal cord palsy, angionecrotic edema, laryngismus stridulus, and tetany. Causes of airway obstruction in adults. Trauma. Laryngotracheal trauma. Laryngotracheal stenosis, for example, due to road traffic accidents or iatrogenic causes. Foreign body aspiration. Tumor. Malignancies in the larynx, pharynx, trachea, bronchus, esophagus, thyroid, or any neck mediastinal mass. Examples include carcinoma of the larynx and carcinoma of the hypopharynx. Infection. Conditions such as tuberculosis laryngitis and neck space infections can lead to airway obstruction. Allergy. Angioneurotic edema, an allergic reaction that causes rapid swelling of the skin and mucous membranes, can affect the airway. Neurological. Bilateral abductor palsy which may occur post-thyroidectomy or cardiothoracic surgery, can result in airway obstruction. Assessment The primary objective is to secure the airway in case of an emergency. A comprehensive evaluation involves thorough history, gathering a detailed patient history to understand the onset, duration, and progression of symptoms, as well as any relevant medical history or triggers. Clinical examination a comprehensive physical examination of the patient, with a focus on assessing the severity and characteristics of Strider, including its type, inspiratory, expiratory, or biphasic, pitch, and associated symptoms. Investigations. Performing relevant diagnostic tests, such as imaging, x-ray, computer tomography scan, endoscopy, or laboratory test to identify the underlying cause of Strider and guide appropriate treatment. Diagnostic Investigations for Strider Radiography Plain X-ray of the neck, anteroposterior or lateral view, to assess for soft tissue masses in the larynx, hypopharynx, airway patency, prevertebral widening, etc. Chest X-ray Postural anterior or lateral view, to evaluate pulmonary status mediastinal widening, lung metastases, signs of aspiration pneumonia, etc. Barium swallow with valsalva maneuver and fluoroscopy to detect filling defects in the postcricoid area and esophagus. CT scan or MRI of the neck and mediastinum for detailed imaging. Endoscopy. Rigid or flexible laryngoscopy 
with caution, as it may trigger laryngospasm. Rigid or flexible bronchoscopy, performed after securing the airway if necessary to assess lower airway involvement. Treatment of Strider. Managing Strider involves a range of interventions tailored to the specific cause and severity of the condition. These approaches include conservative, intubation, cricothyroidotomy, tracheostomy. Conservative management. Conservative management of Strider involves non-invasive interventions to address the underlying causes and alleviate symptoms. Antibiotics, parenteral. Intravenous antibiotics may be administered to treat underlying infections, such as epiglottitis or laryngotracheobronchitis. Steroids, parenteral. High-dose steroids, like hydrocortisone, can be given intravenously to reduce inflammation and swelling in the airway. A typical example is an intravenous bolus dose of 100 to 200 mg. Humidification. Providing moistened air through humidification can help soothe the airway and reduce irritation. Mucolytics. Medications like bromhexine may be used to thin mucus secretions, making it easier to clear the airway. Oxygen administration. Supplemental oxygen may be administered to ensure adequate oxygenation. Intravenous fluids. Intravenous fluids are given to maintain hydration and support overall health. Positioning. Proper positioning, such as placing the patient in a lateral position or using an oral pharyngeal airway, can help manage airway obstruction, especially if the tongue falls back. In some cases, placing the patient in a prone position can alleviate strider associated with conditions like laryngomalacia. Bronchodilators. If bronchospasm is contributing to strider, bronchodilators may be prescribed to relax the airway muscles. Avoid sedation. It's important to avoid administrating sedatives until the airway is fully secured and stabilized, as sedation can further compromise respiratory function. Airway Management and Strider When dealing with strider, various methods of airway management may be employed based on the severity of the condition and the underlying causes. These methods include intubation, Intubation involves the insertion of an appropriately sized endotracheal tube into the trachea through either the oral cavity, oral tracheal, or the nose, nasotracheal. This procedure is typically performed using a Macintosh laryngoscope to visualize and assess the airway. Advantages of intubation Easy and quick in some cases. Disadvantages of intubation Difficult intubation should be suspected in cases with trismus, mandibular fracture, and oral pharyngeal supraglottic tumors. Prolonged intubation can cause stenosis of the subglottic trachea. Morbidity is more. Respiratory feed. Patients cannot take oral feeds. Difficult to maintain the patency of the tube. Tracheobronchial toileting is difficult. Airway resistance and dead space is increased. Tracheostomy. Tracheostomy is a surgical procedure in which an incision is made into the trachea through the front of the neck to establish a secure airway. It's often considered when other methods are not feasible or when a more long-term airway solution is needed. Advantages of tracheostomy. Bypasses proximal obstruction can be maintained for prolonged periods. Maintenance is easy. Morbidity is less. Airway resistance reduced. Dead space reduced. Tracheobronchial toilet better. Oral feeds can be given as swallow is not affected. Disadvantages of tracheostomy. More time to secure airway. Surgical procedure. Major in children, difficult in children, expertise is necessary, complications of surgery may occur. Cricothyroidotomy. In emergencies, a cricothyroidotomy can be performed. 
This involves making a midline incision through the cricothyroid membrane and administering oxygen through a catheter. It's a temporary measure and is followed by tracheostomy to prevent complications like perichondritis of the cricoid cartilage. Complication Subglottic stenosis is a potential complication of this procedure. Other airway management methods Transtracheal oxygen administration This method involves the percutaneous introduction of a large-gauge Gelco needle directly into the trachea for oxygen delivery. Mini tracheostomy Mini tracheostomy is a minimally invasive procedure that allows for airway access and may be considered in certain cases. Percutaneous tracheostomy This procedure involves a percutaneous insertion of a tracheostomy tube and is used in specific clinical situations. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.